सी आई टी एन सी आर टी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनि शाला सो लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनि शाला क्लास एट नमस्ते एंड हेलो टू ऑल माई डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर निधि सिंह एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट क्लास एट जोग्राफी टेक्स्ट बुक चैप्टर टू दैट इज लैंड सॉयल वॉटर नेचुरल वेजिटेशन एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ रिसोर्सेज लाइक द लास्ट चैप्टर वेर वी टॉक अबाउट रिसोर्सेज आई विल अगेन नरेट अ स्टोरी टू यू This is a story of two people living at two different places of the world. One in Africa and another one in New Zealand. Now listen to this. In a small village in Tanzania, Africa, Mamba gets up very early in the morning to fetch water. She has to walk a long way and returns after a few hours. She then helps her mother in the house and joins her brothers in taking care of their goats. All her family owns is a piece of rocky land around their small hut. Mamba's father can barely grow some maize and beans on it after toiling hard. This is not enough to feed their family for the whole year. Peter lives in the heart of the sheep rearing region in New Zealand where his family runs a wool processing factory. Every day when he returns from school Peter watches his uncle taking care of their sheep Their sheep yard is situated on a wide grassy plain with hills in the far distance It is managed in a scientific way using the latest technology Peter's family also grows vegetables through organic farming. Mamba and Peter stay in two different parts of the world and lead very different lives. This difference is because of the differences in the quality of land, soil, water, natural vegetation animals and the usage of technology the availability of such resources is the main reason places differ from each other now observe the land type of soil and water availability in the region you live discuss it with your friends how it has influenced the lifestyle of people there now we will be discussing about various resources in details at first we will discuss about land land is among the most important natural resources it covers only about 30% of the total area of the earth's surface and all parts of this small percentage are not habitable that means it is not suitable for living the uneven distribution of population in different parts of the world is mainly due to varied characteristics of land and climate the rugged topography steep slopes of the mountains low lying areas susceptible to water logging desert areas thick forested areas 
आर नॉर्मली स्पार्सली पॉपुलेटेड और अन इनहेबिटेड दैट मीन्स इधर नो वन लिव्स देयर और वेरी फ्यू पीपल लिव देयर प्लेन्स एंड रिवर वैलीज ऑफर सुटेबल लैंड फॉर एग्रीकल्चर हेंस दीज आर द डेंसली पॉपुलेटेड एरियाज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड land is used for different purposes such as agriculture forestry mining building houses roads and setting up of industries this is commonly termed as land use recall the story we heard at the starting of the session can you list out the different ways in which mambas and peters family use their land the use of land is determined by physical factors such as topography soil climate minerals and availability of water human factors such as population and technology are also important determinants of land use pattern land can also be classified on the basis of ownership as private land and community land private land is owned by individuals or privately whereas community land is owned by the community for common uses like collection of fodder fruits nuts or medicinal herbs these community lands are also called common property resources or cprs now let us observe people and their demands are ever growing but the availability of land is limited the quality of land also differs from place to place people started encroaching the common lands to build up commercial areas housing complexes in the urban areas and to expand the agricultural land in the rural areas today the vast changes in the land use pattern also reflect the cultural changes in our society land degradation landslides soil erosion desertification are the major threats to the environment because of the expansion of agriculture and construction activities try to find out in your locality is there any piece of land which was earlier a forest area or grassland and now it is being used as agricultural area or construction of buildings has been done on them you can talk to some elderly persons in your family or neighborhood and collect information about changes in the land use over the years in the place where you live growing population and their ever growing demand has led to a large scale destruction of forest cover and arable land this has created a fear of losing this natural resource therefore the present rate of degradation of land must be checked afforestation land reclamation regulated use of chemical pesticides and fertilizers and checks on overgrazing are some of the 
common methods used to conserve land resources apart from land in general soil is also an important resource what is soil the thin layer of grainy substance covering the surface of the earth is called soil it is closely linked to land landforms determine the type of soil soil is made up of organic matter minerals and weathered rocks found on the earth this happens through the process of weathering the right mix of minerals and organic matter make the soil fertile did you know soil is not the same all over they are also not the same at varying depths the topmost layer of soil is known as top soil and is made up of humus the organic matter the second layer beneath top soil is the subsoil with sand silt and clay the third layer is the weathered rock or the broken rock weathered rock is formed out of the process of weathering now what is weathering weathering is a process of breaking down and decay of exposed rocks by temperature changes frost action plants animals and human activity the innermost layer deep in the layer of soil is the parent material now you know the four layers of soil have you ever thought how the soil has been formed it takes hundreds of years to create an inch of soil but how are they formed the major factors of soil formation are the nature of the parent rock and climatic factors other factors are the topography role of organic material and time taken for the composition of soil formation all these differ from place to place now the first and foremost important factor is parent rock this determines color texture chemical properties minerals content and permeability of rocks so these are the characteristics that are de determined by parent rock second one is climate temperature rainfall etc influence rate of weathering and humus formation in the soil the third one is topography or relief altitude and slope determine accumulation of soil this means how thick the layer of soil is in areas of high altitude and steep slopes soil is not able to settle and gets transported to the lower areas therefore mountainous areas have thin layer of soil fourth factor is flora fauna and microorganisms flora means plants and trees fauna means animals and birds etc and microorganisms they affect the rate of humus formation humus is responsible for the fertility of soil if a soil has large amount of humus content in it it will be more fertile fifth is 
time time determines thickness of soil profile as i told you that it takes hundreds of years to form a centimeter of soil time is also an important factor for the formation of soil as said earlier soil is not the same all over there are different types of soils as well in india soils could be alluvial black red laterite desert and mountain soil all these types of soils have been formed out of the mentioned factors alluvial soil can be found in the northern plains of india black soil in the deccan region of central and south india and red soil in the region surrounding the black soil laterite soils are found in the areas of heavy rainfall can you identify the regions in india where heavy rainfall occurs i will give you a hint heavy rainfall occurs in parts of south india and northeast india the desert and mountain soil are found in desert and mountainous regions of india try to find out which type of soil is found in your locality you can observe the soil look up in your atlas and talk to your elders soil erosion and depletion are the major threats to soil as a resource both human and natural factors can lead to degradation of soils factors which lead to soil degradation are deforestation overgrazing overuse of chemical fertilizers and pesticides rainwash landslide and floods let us learn about some methods of soil conservation the first one is mulching the bare ground between plants is covered with a layer of organic matter like straw it helps in retaining soil moisture so this is one of the practices used for soil conservation second one is contour barriers stones grasses soil are used to build barriers along contours trenches are made in front of the barriers to collect water the third practice is rock dam rocks are piled up to slow down the flow of water this prevents gullies and further soil loss fourth is terrace farming broad flat steps or terraces are made on the steep slopes so that flat surfaces are available to grow crops they reduce surface runoff and soil erosion fifth method is intercropping different crops are grown in alternate rows and are sown at different times to protect the soil from rainwash sixth is contour plowing plowing parallel to the contours of a hill slope to form a natural barrier for water to flow down the slope is another practice seventh practice is shelter belts in the coastal and dry regions rows of trees are planted to check the wind movement to protect soil cover after land and soil 
Now we will discuss about water. Water is a vital renewable natural resource. Three fourths of the Earth's surface is covered with water. It is therefore appropriately called the water planet. It was in the primitive oceans that life began almost 3.5 billion years back. Even today, the oceans cover two thirds of the Earth's surface and support a rich variety of plant and animal life. The ocean water is, however, saline and not fit for human consumption. Fresh water accounts for only about 2.7%. Nearly 70% of this occurs as ice sheets and glaciers in Antarctica, Greenland and mountain regions. Due to their location, they are inaccessible. Only 1% of fresh water is available and fit for human use. Imagine only 1% of fresh water. It is found as groundwater, as surface water in rivers and lakes and as water vapour in the atmosphere. Fresh water is therefore the most precious substance on earth. Water can neither be added nor subtracted from the earth. Its total volume remains constant. Its abundance only seems to vary because it is in constant motion. Cyclic through the oceans, the air, the land and back again through the processes of evaporation, precipitation and runoff. This, as you already know, is referred to as the water cycle. Humans use huge amount of water not only for drinking and washing but also in the process of production. Water for agriculture, industries, generating electricity through reservoirs of dams are some of the other usages. Increasing population, rising demands for food and cash crops, increasing urbanization and rising standards of living are the major factors leading to shortages in supply of fresh water either due to drying up of water sources or water pollution do you know a dripping tap wastes 1200 liters of water in a year there is scarcity of water in many regions of the world and even in India. Most of Africa, West Asia, South Asia, parts of USA, Northwest Mexico, parts of South America and entire Australia are facing shortages in fresh water supply. Countries located in climatic zones most susceptible to droughts face great problems of water scarcity. Thus, water shortage may be a consequence of variation in seasonal or annual precipitation or the scarcity is caused by over-exploitation and contamination of water sources. We have talked about land, soil and water resources. Natural vegetation and wildlife exist only in the narrow zone of contact between the lithosphere 
hydrosphere and atmosphere that we call biosphere in the biosphere living beings are interrelated and interdependent on each other for survival this life supporting system is known as the ecosystem vegetation and wildlife are valuable resources plants provide us with food timber give shelter to animals produce oxygen we breathe protect soils act as shelter bells help in storage of underground water give us fruits nuts latex turpentine oil gum medicinal plants etc even the paper that you use is got from plants only there are innumerable uses of plants and you can add some more wildlife includes animals birds insects as well as the aquatic life forms they provide us milk meat hides and wool insect like bees provide us honey help in pollination of flowers and have an important role to play as decomposers in the ecosystem the birds feed on insects and act as decomposers as well vulture due to its ability to feed on dead livestock is a scavenger and considered a vital cleanser of the environment have you seen a vulture now it is found very rarely in our environment it's scary but then they are very important for maintaining the balance of our environment so animals big or small all are integral to maintaining balance in the ecosystem like any other resource natural vegetation is not the same all over the growth of vegetation depends primarily on temperature and moisture the major vegetation types of the world are grouped as forests grasslands scrubs and tundra in areas of heavy rainfall huge trees may thrive the forests are thus associated with areas having abundant water supply as the amount of moisture decreases the size of trees and their density reduces short stunted trees and grasses grow in the regions of moderate rainfall forming the grasslands of the world thorny shrubs and shrubs grow in dry areas of low rainfall in such areas plants have deep roots and leaves with thorny and waxy surface that reduce loss of moisture through transpiration have you seen a cactus plant it is thorny right and the leaves are succulent they are thick and have water in them tundra vegetation of cold polar regions comprise of mosses and lichens today there are many more people in the world than there were 2 centuries back to feed the growing numbers large areas of forest have been cleared to grow crops forest cover all over the world is vanishing rapidly there is an urgent need to conserve this valuable resources the conservation part of natural vegetation and wildlife resources 
changes of climate and human interferences can cause the loss of natural habitats for the plants and animals many species have become vulnerable or endangered and some are on the verge of extinction deforestation soil erosion constructional activities forest fires tsunami and landslides are some of the human and natural factors which accelerate the process of extinction of these resources one of the major concerns is the poaching which result in a sharp decline in the number of particular species the animals are poached for collection and illegal trade of hides skin nails teeth horns as well as feathers some of these animals are tiger lion elephant and deer etc so how are they protected then what is the way out these questions must be occurring in your mind national parks wildlife sanctuaries biosphere reserves are made to protect our natural vegetation and wildlife try finding out the meanings of these terms conservation of creeks lakes and wetlands is necessary to save the precious resource from depletion awareness programs like social forestry and van mahotsav should be encouraged at the regional and community levels friends i hope you must have understood the topic well in the next session we will be coming up with few other topics till then bye take care cit and cert presents to you the curriculum based series dhwani shala so friends you were just listening to the series dhwani shala production assistants minakshi kukreti and tanu gupta recorded by batilang lingdo produced by vandana arimardan This series was brought to you by CIET and CERT New Delhi India